Hi, I'm Alex and welcome back to Dreams of Green. Today we're down at Fawcett's Creek in Kyogle and I'm here with the head of land care, Rob Drury, and we're um, basically starting to map out all of the riparian trees um, to create a, a regional seed bank, can't we? So, yep. Yeah. It's part of the regional seed bank project, so we hope to create a store of seeds that we can share amongst other groups on the north coast. Yeah, fantastic. It's really exciting because I've um, to expand the different species on our property, I've um, purchased and swapped many trees at Landcare. Um, and so now it's um, really good to actually go for a walk and be able to identify just what they look like uh, several years on. We've got some hoop pines. How old are the hoop pines? Uh, they were planted in 1930, so they're nearly so I think old. if I pan around, you can see in the background here, they're yeah, nearly 100 years old, which yep. is quite amazing. Yep. Now, the really exciting thing is uh, there's two bo books that I absolutely ah. swear by to yes. identify uh, street <laughs> trees and rainforest species. And let me grab those now. If you're after rainforest books to help identify which species are which, we're here with the author of these two amazing <laughs> rainforest books. Nan uh, Nicholson. So welcome, right. Nan. Thank you right. so much for joining us. Uh, that's fine. Actually, there are six of these books now, and there's, there's quite a lot of other books around too on rainforest plant identification. Two I should mention are uh, Subtropical rain, uh, Plants, no, Plants of the Subtropics by Andrew Benwell. It's a recent book that's just come out that's about 50 bucks, and it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. And Mangroves to Mountains by Glenn Leeper and others is a really great book to have. So I can really recommend, uh, short of going around the plants and looking at them and being told what they are by someone who knows, just flip through books, just look at photographic books over and over and after a while they start to sink in. And it's really good fun once you start getting a few names on things. Uh, we've had heaps of fun here today just walking around. I think I've got about 100 species, which is obviously regrowth a lot and a lot of fantastic planting by somebody long ago who did a really great job. And then lots of natives coming in on their own to complete the, um, the diversity. So it's a really terrific place and in, in really good condition. So this is a really good resource for local Kogel community and I hope they value it because it's, they're jolly lucky to have it. It's been an amazing, hasn't it, to identify these um, beautiful sources of uh, seeds to basically continue propagating well into the future mm. and help get all of these species on people's properties, yep. as well as for regen work as well. Yep. So thank you so much, Nan, and we'll go and introduce you to Michelle. And how lucky are we? We're also here with Michelle, and Michelle is the author of this is another one of the oh, bibles awesome. that I absolutely swear by. When you don't know which native tree is what, or you're wanting to know uh, what time of year to basically find the seed <laughs> and be able to identify them, this book has helped me propagate thousands of trees in my own backyard nursery. So thank you so much, Ms. Michelle, for joining us here today and for actually co-authoring this book. It's such an amazing resource. Yeah, and it was um, an amazing process to put this together with the team at Firewheel and, um, and also to be able to get the photos from Hugh um, Nicholson as well. So it was a real labour of love and um, so glad to see it's actually being used by people. That Absolutely. makes me feel stoked. I've used this book to identify a lot of trees uh, mm. as street trees as yeah. well. So things yeah. like the Australian teak or crow's ash, the mm. tulip wood, um, there's so many in, um, in this book. So yeah, fabulous yeah. resource. And it's an interesting pathway, which is kind of what I took to identifying trees actually by the fruit or seed first. On our walk along Fawcett's Creek today, we've been using this app. So it's everything at your fingertips on a phone. Mm. I use the Rainforest app all the time for ID. There's lots of amazing photos in there and accurate information. And then also um, we're working today on doing some mapping because there's a, another app which is the Sea Tree Maps app. And this is something that actually is like a species list on steroids. You actually not only know what species you've got but exactly where they are. Yeah. And it's a great way too of not having to remember everything in your head of where you've collected seed which is what I've been doing. Yeah. So I'll make sure I put uh, right. a link for the app in the description below for sure because yeah. I'm definitely going to be downloading this. So thank you very much. <laughs> All sure. right, so we'll continue on our walk and try and identify some more uh, rainforest species. You know, if it does set seed, oh, yeah, yeah, look. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it'll be good genetics if you've got, you know, if you want to grow them. It's a nice specimen, right? Oh, sorry, I'm in the... So as we're going along our riparian walk, some of the key pioneer species that we've noticed popping up by themselves are things like this beautiful red kamala. So one of the ways of identifying the red kamala, the easiest way, is in a couple of months it's going to fruit and the red kamala have these beautiful, these are just the flowers now, so in November we're getting the sprays of flowers and in a couple of months you'll see the red fruits form and it'll come off like a red powder in your hand. So that's the key identifier of the red kamala. So this is a fantastic pioneer riparian species, super tough. And another one that we've identified on our walk, we've got the black bean. So these are popping up everywhere and I'm going to show you later what the pods look like. They have huge beans like this and a seed pod um, about this big. So at the moment they're flowering. So I'll take you to some more mature versions of the black bean, which is a great uh, riparian species. And the other one we've got here that works really well, the Grevillea robusta or the silky oak. And I've spoken about these in the past. I've put many of these um, in the paddock, in my food forest as well. So they're easy to identify because you can see the really rough bark. Typically they're a very straight trunk. They're a popular timber species. And if we pan up, you can see the canopy all the way up the top there. Now they have quite a ferny foliage. So you can see this is just an old leaf here, but the leaf structure is a ferny grevillea like leaf structure. Um, so that's one of the key ways of identifying them. And a month ago in October, they just had the most beautiful golden yellow flowers, kind of an orangey, uh, orangey yellow flower. So that's the grevillea robusta, fantastic pioneer for, um, as I said, in the paddock, but also riparian zone. They're um, flood tolerant as well. And another really good one that we've identified, if I come over here, so this here is the Creek Sandpaper Fig and really easy way of identifying the creek sandpaper fig. These pop up in our paddock as well, all over the place. All you need to do is just check the leaf and it feels like sandpaper. So these, as I said, just through my observations at home, these have popped up as um, naturally uh, just by themselves from the birds in the paddock. So they are a fantastic one um, to get started with. So we'll go have a look at some of the black beans and some of the other species now along our walks. Now, how do we identify the magnificent black bean? They are flowering at the moment, it's November. And you can see, if we have a look under the canopy, it's just become this carpet of yellow and orange flowers. And here's a close up of the seed pod. So that's a small pod, often you get them slightly bigger with more seeds. And this is what a juvenile looks like. So these are the black beans popping up under the canopy. There's one here, some of the more mature ones here, but you'll see a really unique leaf pattern. They form a dense canopy and under the shade of the black beans, there's just such a huge temperature difference. So really great one to cool temperatures and create a dense shade. So you just collect the seeds, pop them in some river sand uh, just on the surface and they germinate really easily. So one of the things that I always uh, love seeing when I'm going on a rainforest walk is these bright red leaves. If you see these along a creek or along the pathway, it's usually a very good indication you have one of my favorite trees in your midst, a blue kwandong. So as we follow the telltale signs of these orange and red leaves, we come to the blue kwandong and you'll see the beautiful smooth trunk and these are a great rainforest species. They provide dappled shade. They don't like the frost, but if you can give them some initial protection from frost with some other fast growing pioneers, they just provide a magnificent canopy of dappled light.
and they grow really well along all sorts of water courses, especially around northern New South Wales. The other species that we've discovered quite a lot of on our walk today is the plum pine. Now it has very distinct foliage which you can see, so really lush. Now these are a really hardy, um, hardy tree, a great one for your riparian uh, plantings and it's just a beautiful ornamental too to have in the garden. They can get quite large and they do have edible fruit, some more palatable than others and I've been propagating lots of these, collecting the fruit, and I collected the fruit um, several months ago. Um, and normally, if you're walking along, you will see all of the fruit in the leaf litter underneath. So one of the key species along Fawcett's Creek here in Kyogle is the rough-leaved elm. And Michelle and Nan have helped us identify these. So you've got that uh, rough bark and really branching habit. And as we pan over to the leaves, you heard I mentioned the sandpaper figs have a rough leaf. So you can see the leaves are quite small. And if you feel the texture of the leaves, they do resemble sandpaper. So that's another great way of identifying this species. So we'll be sure to keep an eye out for when this is flowering and fruiting. And of course, that's why I recommend these, uh, these book guides so much, as well as the apps. It gives you a great idea of when to look out for the seeds and the fruit to be able to propagate your own. And just give her a leaf. So thank you so much, Nan, and thank you so much, Michelle. We've been along the creek and identified so many important riparian species. And what really stood out, Michelle? Um, I guess there were some, some of the biggest rough-leaved elms that I've seen here. Um, so that was great to see. And, you know, you'd think that perhaps they were natural and native, but actually this site's really interesting because Groups of people have been coming here and planting trees for around 100 years and it's a really great testament to what can happen when, you know, just groups of people decide oh, we're going to put trees in the ground, we're going to look after it and then they go and another group comes along and does their bit and then they go and, you know, it just always inspires me to keep planting trees when I come to sites like this. That's what I definitely you know. found really inspiring actually, to see the just the transformation over you know the last hundred years of people planting trees and the incredible biodiversity and now how we're going to continue the legacy by collecting these seeds and you were yeah. quite amazed at the the different seeds the birds had brought in as well I think you were saying so an amazing resource for the Kyogle community mm -hmm. and also as we pan over here um, it's creating really important um, habitat um, for our flying foxes which are under threat. So um, that's the beauty of this as well. It's just absolutely stunning to go for a wander. You can see there's beautifully maintained pathways throughout this system and you can take a walk along the creek and it's a great way of getting inspiration for your own property. So thank Yay. you so much ladies, <laughs> really appreciate you coming out. It's been an absolute joy and just learnt so much. Can't wait till the next time. Thank Yay. you so much. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>